we'll come back. So we, ha we have been discussing Shannon capacity and robotic capacity. And let's try to figure out what does it mean uh, when we say the channel capacity C bits per second. What Shannon proved was that if C is B log base to a one plus gamma bit per second, that means what? That means that means that if you transmit at a rate R less than or equals to C bits per second, then there exists a code for which you can transmit this information, which is less than or equals to C with probability of error negligibly small. And the converse theorem would say that if you try to transmit at a rate greater than C, then the probability of error would be bounded away from zero. That means you would not be able to transmit at arbitrarily small error probability. So that's what we mean when we say that uh, what is the capacity? Capacity means that you, you can be you you can transmit that much information over the channel with with very negligible error probability, the desired error probability. And if you try to transmit at a rate greater than that capacity, you would not get an uh, you would not get a probability of error that is negligibly small. So that that's what we mean by. Uh, ch channel capacity. So then we discussed uh, the, sh the Shannon capacity and the ergodic capacity. So now we are ready to discuss what is uh, the capacity under fading. So we would uh, start with the system model. So suppose we have uh, W as a as a message to be transmitted, this W word get encoded and this in encoded message let, let us call X of I which is then transmitted into the channel so it is transmitted into the channel in the channel in addition to AWG and noise, now we would have a channel gain. Let's call it root G of I. And then, of course, there would be additive point Gaussian noise. That is an additive. That would get additive. And then add the receiver end. That's what you receive. That's your Y sub I. You would have a decoder here that decoder tries to decode what was transmitted and we will call it w hat so this is a system model for the capacity under fading and uh, so let's let's uh, cover the basics now so this g root g sub i is the is the channel gain, and we are calling it root g sub i because g sub i would be the power gain of the channel, and that, that would allow us to define what is the instantaneous signal to noise ratio. So the instantaneous signal to noise ratio we would call it gamma sub i or gamma as a function of i, we'll call it the average transmitted power times root g sub i divided by the noise, total noise power. So that's how we are defining gamma sub i, which is your instantaneous uh, C signal to noise ratio because this gamma sub i, if for example, your average transmitted power is fixed, your bandwidth is fixed, you would assume that the receiver noise spectral density does not change uh, over a matter of time, over the, over the interval of interest. And this G sub i, which is your power gain of the channel, controls what? Controls 
your the distribution of the instantaneous signal to noise ratio so that's that's how we have defined this instantaneous signal to noise ratio and if that is the case what would be gamma bar now this gamma bar would be equals to p bar g bar over l not b right where g bar is nothing but expected value of g sub i right that, that is your average signal to noise ratio and that is your instantaneous signal to noise ratio right? and the question is that you should have in your mind is now given these gamma sub i and gamma bar can you compute what is the awgn capacity and what would be the robotic capacity right we'll come back to that so how would you compute the awgn capacity with this information and how would you compute the ergodic capacity with this information? Let's try to think about that. And we'll come back to that. So this is our system model for uh, the capacity uh, under fading, right? As we have said that G sub i is called the, the, the channel gain or the channel power gain. We also call it channel side information. or CSI. This channel side information may or may not be available at the transmitter or the receiver end. Right? And then depending upon whether or not it is available and depending upon what is available at the transmitting end and what is available, what information is available at the receiver end, the capacity of the wireless channel would be different. So there can be a number of scenarios under which you can compute uh, the capacity of the wireless channel. So let's list down those scenarios. Okay. So scenario zero is that we know nothing is known about G sub i. If nothing is known about G sub i, then uh, the capacity of the wireless channel is unknown. And people, the experts in the information theory, believe that it's likely that the capacity is zero. Right? And, but that is, nobody has yet solved this problem, but their hunch is that the capacity would be zero if nothing is known at the transmitting end and at the receiving end. And then comes the scenario one. In the scenario one, the distribution of G sub i is known, but the instantaneous signal to noise ratio is not known, right? So scenario one, only the distribution of gamma sub i, if you know the distribution of G sub i, you know the distribution of gamma sub i, because G sub i's distribution is controlling the distribution of the instantaneous signal to noise ratio. That means the, in the scenario one, you only know the distribution of the instantaneous signal to noise, signal to noise ratio. And this is the case again, where people have derived the channel capacity for a number of um, for a number of distributions for example for relay iid fading um, the, the the capacity has been derived um, for finite state markov models that were discussed in the last uh, chapter for that the capacity has been derived but, but for most of the distributions the capacity is still unknown it's difficult to compute uh, the, the, the capacity if only the distribution of the of the instantaneous signal to noise ratio is known and the actual instantaneous signal to noise ratio is not known at the transmitter and the receiving end so that is um, that is scenario one and then comes the scenario two where in addition to the distribution In addition to the distribution, uh, 
we know the instantaneous signal tonalization ratio at the receiver end. This scenario is called receiver CSI. And known as implied. Or in short, we'll call it Rx CSI. So Rx CSI would mean that the channel side information is known at the receiver end. The instantaneous channel side information is known at the receiver end. And what is implied is the distribution of, uh, of uh, gamma sub i is known at both the transmitting end and the receiver end. This was scenario two. And then now let, let's discuss what is scenario three, that is the last scenario that we are going to discuss. And scenario three is that, that in addition to the distribution, we know gamma sub i at both the transmitting end and the receiving end. So this would be called transmitter slash receiver channel size information. And again, no one is implied. So in short, we would call it TX RX CSI. That means that the, the channel side information is known at both the transmitter and the receiver end. So we would start with the scenario two uh, in the next video.